Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. It's Paul Esther here and I want to make a video today talking to you about the changes that they're making to the Skull Merchant before she comes out on March the 7th. But first I want to remind you all that the Community Choice event begins today, runs from now until March the 3rd. And here's what you're going to get. Uh, double experience points, daily login rewards, boosted favorite maps, and chosen shrine perks. And remember that the double XP helps you get iridescent shards faster and rift fragments faster. So you're going to get you know twice as many of both of those. So the XP was definitely the way to go. Anyway, the purpose of this video today is to talk about this tweet here. She's done playing nice. Here's what changed since last week's PTB in the developer update. If you click that, it takes you to this article here about the Skull Merchant. And it says, It's been about a week since the Tools of Torment public test build went live, and we've been busy combing through your feedback in the days since. And today we'd like to share a large package of polish and balance adjustments, which we've prepared for the chapter's release on March 7th. As always, we want to give our appreciation for everyone who took the time to share their thoughts on this new content. Your feedback is invaluable in shaping the game. And now, without further ado, the Skull Merchant. First up, deploying a drone to begin with. In the PTB, releasing a drone would put your power on cooldown for 12 and a half seconds. This could feel a little limiting, considering drones already cannot be placed within a certain range of one another. And we've decoupled, drone, de we've decoupled deploying drones from the power's cooldown. The cooldown is now solely used for reactivating existing drones and furthermore has been lowered to 10 seconds. Once a drone is deployed, it would take 4 seconds to become active. This gave survivors a lot of time to react and move away before it began locking on. And for the release, we're lowering the initialization time of the newly placed drones to 3 seconds. So they're going to activate faster and it sounds like you can just throw up all four of your drones very quickly if you want to and you don't have to wait for the cooldown cooldowns no only going to be on reactivation if they go into scouting mode speaking of newly placed drones survivors were previously capable of disabling a drone after only five seconds this could allow bold and coordinated survivors to disable a drone before it could have any meaningful effect and for release we're increasing this unhackable window to 10 seconds once the drone becomes unhackable, it will remain active for an additional 20 seconds for a total combined act active time of 30 seconds, much like the PTB. The killer can reactivate a drone at will using their scanner. That's something that I found is very important because if you reactivate the drone, then it can scan through walls. If it's just in scouting mode with those two little lighthouse lights going around, much easier for the survivors to avoid detection. So I was constantly looking around and seeing which drones had gone into scouting and turning them onto active. As a, the killer, staying inside an active drone's radius for three seconds would grant you the undetectable status effect, allowing you to ambush survivors. This could create some awkward moments where you'd be standing around waiting for the effect to kick in, so reducing this to two seconds. And for survivors, spending too long in an active zone can be dangerous, Active drones will lock onto survivors in their radius, making them exposed. However, the short duration could make it difficult for the killer to react unless they were already chasing a survivor. We've made a few changes to lock on mechanic for release. The lock on duration has been increased to 60 seconds, was 30. An incomplete lock on will start to decay after 10 seconds of exiting an active zone. It was 5. Entering an active zone while locked on will reset your lock on to 60 seconds and prevent it from decaying until you leave the zone. The Skull Merchant can now see survivors lock on progress in order to better plan their chases. I like all of this. Like, this is all buffs for her. Besides locking on, the drones are also a powerful tool for tracking survivors. In the PTB, we found it to be a little difficult to fully take advantage of your eyes in the sky, so we've made some changes in that department as well. The claw trap battery life has been increased to 45 seconds, it was 25 seconds, allowing the killer to track survivors for longer. The overcharge add-on has been adjusted accordingly, because that was something that would extend it, so they don't want to extend it too far for the battery life. Survivors will no longer receive an indicator when their location is revealed by the Skull Merchant Scanner. I think that was the, the eye, that, um, eye in the sky that a uh, appeared above your head that will let you know when they were tracking you via the scanner. 
The Skull Merchant will move faster when checking her radar. Now 4.4 meters per second it was 4 meters per second. So when checking radar, she was moving as fast as a survivor. Now this is more like the speed of the Huntress. Normally the fastest killer can move is 4.6 meters per second. By default, this uh, is much less of a penalty. SFX have been updated to provide a clearer notification when a survivor has been tracked. With all this in mind, survivors will want to be much more wary when they come face to face with the Skull Merchant. To ensure that this doesn't make her too frustrating to play against, we've added, we've taken some additional considerations to accompany these changes, but be warned, there's risk involved. Approaching a drone with a claw trap will no longer cause it to enter an unhackable state, preventing survivors from interacting with it. Survivors with a claw trap can now disable drones, but keep in mind that entering the drone's range will cause it to activate and recharge your trap's battery. Survivors who fail to hack will now immediately be locked on. Whether her drones are locking onto survivors or she's tracking their every move, we hope you'll find these changes make the Skull Merchant a much bigger threat when she's released on March 7th. I just genuinely can't wait to play her. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm not a killer main. I played her for three days straight on the PTB and I had so much fun doing it. I'm anxious to see what it's like. When uh, I go against survivors by MMR, we'll see what happens. Perks. Alongside tweaks to the new killer, we've also made some modifications to a few perks following feedback in the PTB. Eruption. During the PTB, eruption was changed to lo no longer make survivors incapacitated, and its regression was changed from total to current progress. While the removal of the status effect worked exactly as we'd hoped, the shift to current progress proved to be a little too far. For the chapter release, Eruption's regression will return to 10% of the generator's total progress. So that means like if you had 25% uh, progress on a gen and the Eruption kicked in, it would only take off like 2.5%, right? But now if you have 25% of the gen done, then it's gonna take off 10%. That makes sense. They'll knock it down to 15% instead of 22.5%. Uh, I think my math made sense there. <laughs> Thwack. Beyond being a, a fun name to say, Thwack causes survivors to scream and reveal their aura to the killer. This perk requires the killer to hook a survivor in order to activate to avoid any unneeded pressure for the killer to seek out and break a pallet or wall, we've removed the timer from this perk. Whack will now remain active indefinitely upon hooking a survivor and only deactivate upon use. That makes that much more valuable. It was very niche window of use for that. Background player. This new perk for Renatu Lira caused him to break into a sprint upon unhooking a survivor. Many pointed out that this left the unhooked survivor alone at the hook, making them easy prey for the killer. Yeah, it would be like, you unhook somebody and they're like, wow, look how fast I am. Zoom away. And if the killer comes back, well, are you going to rate? Are you going to go after the person who's zooming away or the vulnerable person who just got unhooked and is much slower? So it kind of encouraged tunneling. So that was like a, a concern that the community had about that perk. <laughs> bye <laughs> i unhooked you now bye background player is receiving a rework in time for the release this perk now activates when the killer picks up another survivor and the duration of its sprint has been reduced to four seconds it was six how you choose to use this speed is up to you whether you're trying to get in position for a save get close to the hook for a rescue or simply to get away as fast as possible we'll leave that to you decide so we'll leave that to you to decide. Now, this is an exhaustion perk. So know that if you're running this, whenever anybody gets picked up, you're going to get exhausted. So you could be exhausted while you're doing the generator. So this is uh, a niche perk to me still, but it's very valuable in builds where you want to beat the killer to a hook to drop the hook with a Sabo play. Or if you want to get in position for a flashlight save, these are the uses for it in my mind. Um, I know a lot of people who used to use dead hard to push themselves quickly into position for flashlight saves. So this can replace that. It's definitely meant for somebody 
who wants to play hero with flashlight saves and Sabo in my mind. Um, let's see, what else? Is that it? The Tools of Torment chapter launches March the 7th. Keep your eyes to the sky. But don't forget to check if the killer's heading your way every once in a while. We'll be watching. Until next time, the Dead by Daylight team. All right, that's pretty short. Um, I really like all the buffs. I know that, you know, she's not a very popular choice. A lot of people are saying that this is the worst chapter ever. Personally, I did not like the night. I like this a lot better. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens when she comes out. I'm looking forward to playing her. This is the most excited I have been to play a killer on launch in quite some time. Not a killer main, but I really, really like the way that I play her. And I'm looking forward to her release. So we'll see what happens. I do have, you know, I still have some complaints. Like, I wish that she didn't have a bedazzled mask or look like, you know, her weapon was made at... Uh, as a DI, uh, do it yourself from the Home Depot. I wish it was more elegant, more like Tony Stark or Bruce Wayne level of tech from a millionaire creating their own their own instruments. But, you know, it is what it is. So I'm looking forward to her release. We'll see you on March 7th. I'll be streaming that day to check out all the content. And let me know what you think in the comments about these changes. Is it still not enough or is it too much? I've seen people say that she's OP before this stuff even came out. And I was having a lot of fun playing her, doing fairly well without these additional changes. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how she plays after this, too. But let me know what you think in the comments. As always, I appreciate hearing from you. And as always, I appreciate the time you spend here with me on my channel. Don't forget to take care of each other in and out of the fog. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. It's a Gen Rush life for us. It's a Gen Rush life for us. Set a hiding, we do gens. Set a randoms, we got friends. It's a Gen Rush life.